Well, hey, howdy. Welcome to the Camp One Dog Workshop. I haven't done any tech tip videos in a while. Been kind of busy, but I, want, I just want to share this. I don't get very many of these in the shop at all. This is a model A. This one's a Sunshine. I also got a Coleman a do reading lamp. And this was very early, way before the CQs and stuff. And it's interesting to see how Coleman's... Uh, technology evolved. I'm restoring this one for Ed Herb for the museum and I got two of them and they looked like this only they had tarnished nickel on them. I haven't started on this one yet. And they were missing the bell. Now I've looked everywhere and I couldn't find anything that looked exactly like the bell but I did find something from one of my electrical supply houses that could be modified. And what the bell does is it lifts up and under here you got the valve and your filler port. So when you open it up you just drop your bell and it doesn't even look like a GPA. It looks like some sort of beautiful table lamp. Anyway, let me tell you what's going on here. Um, it's interesting to see how Coleman technology evolved over the years. Basically most of you guys are familiar with the standard generator. It's a brass tube, has a little orifice nut, and a little cleaning rod, pricker rod, to clear this. And this is basically the design that they're using for all of their generators, some modifications, and but this is the basic thing. But before they came up with this, this is what they used on the Model A reading lamp. When I first got it, I thought, where in the heck is a generator on this thing? Um, the first time I saw a picture of one. When I got one in the hand, I was able to figure it out. I, do, I haven't tightened everything up on this. I kept it loose so I could show you what's going on. Um, this up rod is not only the support for the burners, it's also the generator. And the way it works is This massive nut is the orifice. There's a little tiny hole. Right now, the way Coleman does it, they got a little tiny thing like this. This is what they started out with. And I always wondered, once I started looking at it, how in the heck can you have this much raw fuel so close to the flame and be safe? And this is how Coleman handled it, and it's pretty ingenious. The orifice screws off. And the first thing you got is a little, a little filter cup. I don't know, can you see that? It's a little tiny cup. It has a piece of screen in there and two holes in it. And this is the last thing the fuel goes through before it gets to the orifice. Now, when I was monkeying around trying to build a super generator, I didn't, I didn't understand this technology, and I just use a raw tube like this. And I couldn't get my uh, fuel to vaporize correctly. But this is how Coleman dealt with it. Hope I can take this apart and show you. Hang on, folks. Inside the big rod. Ah, look at this stinking thing. Coleman put a metal rod. This is a solid metal rod, but it's not a tight fit. So what happens is this takes up the volume of the amount of fuel, raw fuel, that would be in here. It also acts as a heat sink. When it heats up, this stays hot, this stays hot, and it helps to vaporize the fuel. Now on top of this, they had another little metal rod in there. And surrounding the metal rod, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Hang on. Surrounding the metal rod, they had an asbestos sleeve. Very similar to what the early ones of these had. You can't get asbestos. At least I don't know where you can get asbestos anymore. So when I redo these, what I do is I use a rock wool. You can buy it on eBay or at your hardware store. It's a... 
fiber made out of puffed rock. So it's heat proof. An eight pack, I'm not gonna be able to get this out. Yes, I can. And they pack that around, there you go, see, around this metal rod. So this acts as a filter too. So the, the concept behind this is you don't have like a half an ounce of raw fuel in this tube. You only got a couple milliliters because this, <clears throat> this rod, see how loose it is? It takes up most of the volume, so only a little bit of fuel can sneak around that. And then as it heats up, it stays good and hot. This is, there's a lot of metal here to stay hot. And uh, that helps vaporize your fuel. So that's the Coleman setup. This is one of their early uh, setups to figure out how to vaporize fuel. The burner assembly we're using today on most of them is pretty much the same, but the way the air is introduced back then was different. They wanted cool air coming in, so they put the snorkel tube, which brings cold air away from the uh, glowing generator or uh, mantles. So anyway, that's that's the scoop on these things. Um, when I started on this guy, it had you know, I had a good dozen stress cracks and for the most part with silver solder I was able to cosmetically close up most of the stress crack cracks and then I of course I cas welded so when I get this thing as final assembly we're going to pressure test it light it up and uh, send uh, brother Ed a picture of his bottle a reading lamp in its full glory all right well thanks for stopping by Camp Wound Dog Workshop and oh wait here's another quick tech 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 tip, don't go away. This is this is a Q99 generator, and they also had an R55 and an R55 uh, jumbo that they use in the CQ lamps. And they figured out that they didn't need all of this. They could just get away with a metal tube. And they reduced the orifice tip from this massive thing to a little square thing like that. You can clear these by soaking them in sea foam, heating them up real hot, burning off the carbon or whatever. And I've had a number of guys say, I can't get the tip clear. I just can't get the tip clear. It's garbage. I'm going to have to go to Old Coleman Parts and buy a repro. But here's something that I don't know if a lot of guys know this or not, but... This little nut screws off. This is the orifice nut. And if it's clogged past the point you can't clear it, the nut on the 220, 228s, all that is the same thread size. So, you know, you pick these up for a couple bucks as opposed to 30 bucks on these. You can unscrew your nut, put it in there, get it good tight, and you're good to go. Anyway, that's it for Camp Boon Dog Workshop. Everybody have a good week. It's Monday, and I'm in a good mood. Wow. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Bye. See you later.